Hello, it is my uh, privilege to be here uh, with uh, Dr. Mike Davidson and uh, Karis Mosley. And um, I'm in very interested to know more about uh, your response in relation to the recent Faith and Sexuality Survey. Could you tell us more about that? Well, this was a survey that was done in 2018, and it's taken us a while to absorb um, everything that that document um, proposed and reported on. And we're in a position now to present to those who are interested our own analysis of the content, and we're just about ready to do that now. Right. Um, where does it or originate exactly? Well, the survey was done here in the United Kingdom, and it was very much, um, I guess, a concern about people within the church who wanted to move away from homosexuality. And it seems as though there was something of a premise that to do this was going to be intrinsically harmful. Right. Uh, do you believe that there is an ulterior motive to this survey? And if yes, what would that be? Well, I just think that um, if we're going to do surveys and then apply them to public policy, it has to be a very high standard of scientific research. And so we have tried to find people who are qualified and in a position to be able to comment on the quality of research that was done in that particular piece of work. Uh, Mike, do you believe that the research uh, from this uh, survey has been imbalanced and has only presented one side and one point of view? I think that those who have uh, put their attention onto that survey, who are in a position to be able to make um, statements about the quality of the research, seem to be indicating that there is a problem um, with the sample, for example, the, the, the proportion of LGBT people who are represented there is way beyond um, the number of people who would be LGBT identified in the society at large. So there are some fundamental problems that they have highlighted. Right. Uh, do you believe that this is uh, maybe Karis an attack on the Christian faith somehow? And uh, how are Christians uh, looked at through this uh, survey? Yes, I think it's fair to say that um, this survey isn't a disinterested um, piece of research. Um, uh, there is a question for respondents to say, do you want uh, therapy for same-sex attraction to be criminalized? Well, that's pretty biased. You don't usually do that when you're just doing a survey. Um, uh, clearly, the, the main proponent of the survey clearly wants it to be criminalized um, and is actually an advisor to the government on LGBT issues on a panel that's been appointed very recently. So yes, it would affect Christian pastoral care. Uh, when we think about, you know, Paul's letter to the Corinthians when he says, such were some of you, and how you've left certain practices behind, it would become, if what the survey authors uh, wanted would become true to be able to have criminalized all kinds of pastoral care in this area, it would be impossible for a lot of Christian work and other work to operate at all in Britain. So it's very serious. Wow. And uh, I know that, Mike, uh, you work with... Uh people with unwanted same-sex attractions, you feel their heart. And uh, can you tell us at least just one or two successful stories so we can just really understand um, the struggles that you face in your daily work? Well, I think there are different kinds of successes, but the basic and fundamental success is that people um, are more at ease in their own skins and in the lives that they lead, and they are able to go in the direction confidently that they have chosen to go in. And that's, th that's the support. Outcomes are different for every client, but the point is they are free to choose, and they need to be free to receive support to achieve their own goals. Karis, this survey presented a number of issues and uh, you have studied every single issue very diligently. What can you tell us? Well, the first problem uh, to um, unpack what Mike was saying is that the 
um, the sample isn't representative of the UK's population, so you can't really compare it to um, random representative samples of the population. So we don't know, a, a tiny number of people wrote in, said they had um, experienced benefit from pastoral care in this area, were happier and had uh, seen a change in their lives. But they basically discounted the, as, as meaningless answers, um, and I think that's a problem. I also suspect that because the um, people designing the surveys already had such strong views that more people who would have seen, uh, experienced a positive change in pastoral care were not writing in. Um, and that's important as well. It is a voluntary sample, of course. But also, um, let me zoom in on the problem of uh, suicide and self-harm, which is always a big issue for, um, that's brought up. Um, we were told the press um, reported that a fifth of people who tried to change and tried to commit suicide. But the, some, the um, questionnaire isn't, um, doesn't show much curiosity in this area. It didn't ask whether did these people already have mental health problems or lifestyle problems uh, before um, they made attempts at changing sexuality. And that is absolutely crucial. Sometimes people, uh, when you talk to counsellors, some people are too vulnerable, ironically, to enter this kind of... Uh, pastoral care, they, they, they need something else beforehand. You need a certain resilience to be able to look into yourself. So th there were basic problems like that. But I want to say something about the press as well. Um, the press needs to be far more careful than they were in reporting on surveys like that. It's very obvious the press outlets didn't bother reading through this quite lengthy survey. They just went for the headline grabbing um, right. distortions. Right. And. Um how can your response be accessed? Is, is your response published anywhere? It will be um, online and available in book form from the IFTCC website. Do you think it, it has the potential to affect public policy? Well, in a negative way, what we hope is that it will um, send out um, a signal to those who are in a position to influence and say, this survey is deeply flawed, do not act on it. So it's more uh, hoping for a negative and a critical impact, and especially making um, journalists rethink how um, carefully and how well they report on such contentious issues. I'm interested, how was the survey reported in the UK press? It was reported in different ways. Um, it first broke in Channel 4 News, and so there was a video interview, a TV interview, with um, Jane Hosan herself, who um, was at the head of the Hosan Foundation that commissioned the survey, she spoke about her own life and, and, and bad experiences with certain kinds of pastoral care. But then there were um, other people as well, somebody from Humanists UK, um, who, uh, yes, spoke in a, a certain way. Um, it was also featured in the Guardian newspaper, and this is interesting. It was not featured in the mental health section, but just in the religion section. And the tag given was Anglicanism, as if it was just an internal spat within the Church of England. I think this was an obvious attempt to uh, pretend that the issue was not really relevant to the public, right. when in reality it is, because it's aimed at, um, at getting the government to push a full legal ban on, on all so-called therapy in this area. Thank you very much. This was very enlightening. <laughs>